I'm here to talk about data security and the importance of being aware of the data you hold so that you can get the upside and cap the downside. All right, uh, thanks for coming, Paula. Thanks for, uh, we're here at VMworld. Thanks for taking, taking a time out from coming to the show. Uh, thank you for inviting me. I think this is a great opportunity for us to talk about um, data gravity and what's going on with data insecurity. So you, uh, it's interesting you use that phrase, data insecurity. Uh, so t w tell me about that. So right now, when everybody talks about security, what they really talk about is they talk about the perimeter, they talk about the network, but they're really not talking about the real issue, which is where the data lives. So you need to think about security in a multi-layer approach, but you know, once you breach the network and you get to the storage array, it's party at my house. There's now you know, Microsoft um, Active Directory in most cases, and having that implemented correctly is what you know, basically protects you from data being stolen or not stolen. And also, if they're in as somebody else, under somebody else's credentials, they could take any data you have and use it against you, right? Um, password files will let them impersonate other people, clear case, credit cards and social security numbers will let them you know, start to do identity theft, um, confidential information will let them steal trade secrets, all that stuff is sitting in your storage array, and your storage array is not telling you about it. It's leaving you exposed, and so we believe that if you're holding the data, you should be responsible for providing visibility and providing security. Make sense? Yeah, it does, and you know, it, this is something I've talked about for a long time, actually, and uh, it, it's, it's sort of, I, I heard the, the description of, of some data centers, and uh, I think it's very similar to what you described, which is, you know, they've got the hard, crunchy exterior, but once they get inside, it's a soft, chewy interior, right? Yep. It's very easy to get to the data in different ways. Uh, and um, you know, you mentioned Active Directory is fine, but you know, if you if you're able to impersonate the credentials of someone, and then there are some other ways I think that you can get to the data as well, right? You, mm -hmm. you talked about that the fact that that storage array uh, doesn't really think about security uh, as you know as as much, right? So, uh, how do you guys come into the picture? So we think the first thing you need to do is you need to provide visibility into what you have, mm -hmm. and you need to be able to track who's accessing it. Then you need to create some d definitions about, you know, what data do you need to protect? Is it confidential information? Is it financial information? Is it customer information? Is it um, employee uh, performance reports? What is it? Um, and everybody has data they have to protect. Mm -hmm. Then you have to figure out how you're going to detect if anybody's breached that. So you need to be proactively seeing who's reading and writing it, and you mm -hmm. need to make sure that they actually have credentials to do that. And if it is breached, you need to be able to figure out the exposure. So when you do the incident investigation, you can actually um, understand what your scope is. But then after that, you need to defend. So you need to be able to understand, you know, somebody just logged in, they trip off a bunch of access not denied, so those are suspicious people and you need to be able to defend against them, mm -hmm. right? So our product is really just defined or, or built to help you define what's important to you, detect when it's breached, and then defend against those breaches. And that's the concept at the point of storage because you're in the house right. now and you've got to defend from inside the house. But, so I guess what I don't understand is if, if, if a person has masked themselves as another user and they're coming in as that user to the storage, how do you see them as anything different than that user? So there's a couple of things. If there was something that they could steal, you need to make sure that that stuff is encrypted or it's put in a safe place. And then what you need to be able to do is you may not be able to stop them from taking it, but you know how they got in and you can plug that hole. So you can watch data leaving the building because we can see things moving to Dropbox. We can see things being copied off. Mm -hmm. So you can watch data leaving the building. So at least you can come in and say, okay, here's how they got in here's who they are, and here's how we're going to stop them, and here's how we're going to follow them. You can't stop completely if someone's impersonating someone, but you right. can figure out who got, who got hacked, what they did with the data, and then how they, got into, how they got into being that person in the first place, so you can start to plug the holes. Which at this point, they don't know any of those things. But at this point, they know very little of those things. Right, cool. All right, well, thanks for scaring the crap out of everybody. You know what? <laughs> it's like anything else. If you admit you have a problem, then you can start to solve it, right? And anybody with data, especially unstructured data, has a problem. Now let's talk about how we solve it. Absolutely. All right, well thanks for, thanks for talking. Thank you for having me. All right. Thanks. Thank you. 
Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that segment with Data Gravity. I hope it scared the crap out of you as much as it scared the crap out of me. Make sure to check out our other videos on the uh, channel, and of course, subscribe.